Hi, welcome to the Hill and Ponton video blog. I'm attorney Rachel Cheek. Today, we're going to be talking about what you can do when the VA does not assign the proper effective date. To start at the most simple level, we're going to use a basic service connection claim for our example of getting into this topic. So as you probably know, when the VA grants service connection, there are some other factors that they consider. So not only do they decide whether the condition that you're claiming is service connected, they also assign a rating, which is going to affect what the size of your VA compensation monthly benefits are. They also assigned an effective date. And the effective date is really big when you're looking at a claim that has been going on for a long time. So it's been on appeal for a couple years. It's been on appeal for 10 years. I've had cases like that. If you've got a case that's been on appeal since, say, 2016, and you get granted in 2020, you get assigned a 30% rating. Not only are you going to start getting your 30% payment following the month of the rating decision, you're also going to get back pay for all those months since 2016 when you should have been getting that 30%. So as you can imagine, depending on how long an appeal has been pending or when you first filed a claim, that back pay can be pretty significant and the effective date determines that back pay. So the effective date is pretty significant too. The general rule for effective dates is the date of claim. So when you file a claim for service connection or for increased rating, I'm using service connection as the example for these, but this also applies a lot in increased rating cases as well. Whenever you file your claim that starts this process, the VA is likely going to assign the effective date as the date you filed a claim. I'll also say if you file an intent to file within one year before filing your formal claim, as long as you're within that year when you file your formal claim, the effective date the VA should give you is the date of that intent to file. So that can be several extra months of benefits. Of course, as with a lot of things, the VA often gets the effective date wrong, which in turn affects the size of the retroactive benefits that you may be receiving. An example of this I can give you that I see a lot is a veteran applies for an increased rating that's first denied and the veteran appeals. And they send you to another CMP exam that shows that you should have an increased rating. The VA then in turn, when they issue a decision granting that increased rating, a lot of times they'll go from the date of the exam rather than the date of the claim. To me, this is always very frustrating because obviously your condition didn't suddenly get worse the day you had an exam. Otherwise, why would you have filed the claim six months ago? But the VA does it a lot. Another example that I see happening a lot is when a veteran has a pending appeal for, say, service connection for back condition. That appeal has been pending since 2018. In 2020, while the appeal is still going on before a final decision has been issued, the back claim is still pending, the veteran files a claim for individual unemployability. If your claim for service connection for the back condition is granted, and then later your application for individual unemployability is granted, the effective date of the individual unemployability benefits legally should go back to the date that you filed your claim for service connection for your back condition. This is assuming a lot of things. This is if your back condition is what contributes to you being unable to work and you have an appropriate combined rating. We don't have to get into all of that right now. What you should know is if you file a claim for individual unemployability while you've got another appeal going on, the VA assigns effective date of individual unemployability as the date they received that 89 40, that's probably wrong. So there are some examples of when VA gets it wrong, but what can you do when that happens? The easiest answer is you file an appeal. And when you file your appeal, you need to specifically state you disagree with this decision because you should be entitled to an earlier effective date for whatever the condition is. Individual unemployability, back condition, PTSD, whatever it is. If you're applying for increased rating and you get the wrong effective date, my tip is for you when you file that appeal, don't say earlier effective date for depression. Because if you were granted service connection for depression in 1985 and then 2018, you file a claim for increased rating, well, they're not going to go all the way back to 1985 to give you that increased rating. And sometimes the VA will read that very literally. What you need to do is say you are requesting an earlier effective date for the 70% rating of depression or whatever the rating is that you were assigned that you believe needs 
needs to go back to the date that you filed your claim for increased rating. Okay, that's easy enough. That's the appeal. Well, how do you prove it? The same way you prove anything at the VA. You can show this with medical records. The VA says your condition didn't get worse until 2019, and you've got a medical record showing that you fit the criteria for a higher rating in 2015. There you go. You can also get a letter from your doctor. You know, you've got a doctor that's been treating you throughout the course of this. They can look at their records and they can say, Mr. Smith has been suffering from this condition as long as I've been treating him since 2005. You can also get lay statements, which are just statements from friends, family, coworkers, people who've been able to observe you and your symptoms. And you can also get a medical opinion from, you know, your own doctor or an independent doctor. Anything to show your condition did not rise to its current level at the time that VA has granted your effective date. What I mean by that is showing that if you get a 70% rating for PTSD and you've had 70% symptoms since the date you filed your claim, but the VA has kind of skipped those three years and just assigned you the date you had a CMP examination showing 70% symptoms, you can appeal that effective date to get it back earlier to the date of your claim if you have evidence. They're not going to do it just because you ask. You've got to have some sort of support for your contention. You can also submit your own statement. The more evidence that you can submit, the better to show that your condition has been at whatever level it is for however long it has been. Same thing for service connection. If they try to assign you the date, the first CMP exam that showed that you had a condition, but you've been suffering from this since, you know, seven years before when you filed your claim, you need to submit some evidence and you need to submit an appeal and you can get your effective date moved back if you are able to support your contention. Well, that's all for today. If you made it this far, thank you so much and make sure to leave a like on this video. And if you want to see more videos on VA disability benefits, subscribe.